We're now going to look at simple joins uh, within a database table or a couple of database tables. So what we'll be doing first of all is going back to our database, creating a new table uh, and essentially linking data from one table to another. So we'll look at how we do that within the database first. That should give you a good idea of how this is going to work in terms of our code. So let's hop over to our database. You can see we've got our people table open and uh, that's within our app database. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new table. So we're going to call this countries and we'll give this three columns. So the first is just going to be ID, which is going to uniquely identify each country. Um, we're also going to have a country code and then we're going to have a country name. So the country code is going to be two characters long and the name, I guess, we'll just put as a varchar 50. And the ID will be an auto increment and primary key. So let's go ahead and save that. So we've now got two tables. We've got people and countries. Now within the table people, we will have the option to supply whether or not this person belongs to a specific country. And that country will be created within the countries table. Now let me show you what we first of all could do and then I'll tell you why it's a bad idea. So inside of um, the structure of people, let's go ahead and just add a new field after here. And let's just give this a varchar 50 for now. This is the wrong way to do it. Um, absolutely wrong way to do it. But let's just say we wanted to choose a country for Alex. So I'm going to say uh, Great Britain. So hit go there. And I want to choose a country for Billy and I'm going to say United States. And that's it. So now I've got two people with different information and they belong to two different countries. That's absolutely fine. Now let's say we introduce another person into the database. And let's just say their country is Great Britain also. I'll just choose now for that. So we've now got another person added to the database who's also part of Great Britain, that's their country. Now what happens if we need to go ahead and change Great Britain? Uh, let's say we accidentally spelt it wrong and this person now needs to have or everyone with great britain needs to have their details changed now this is a bit of a problem because what's going to happen now is this going to require an sql statement or an sql query to go ahead and update all of the users whose country is equal to this string to another string and it also means that we're duplicating data when there's absolutely no need to duplicate this data whatsoever so what we're going to do instead is, uh, instead of this being a varchar 50, we're going to set this to an integer. Now what that's going to mean is that when we come to enter a country, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, instead of United Kingdom, United States, India, or whatever, Germany, whatever. So inside of our countries table, we're going to go ahead and create a list of countries. I'm not going to enter all of them, I'm just going to give them the, the countries that or, or apply the countries that we require. So for example, Great Britain and United States. So the two letter country code and the name of the country. So we now have a separate countries table which deals with the countries. Now the other reason this is useful is let's say another part of your application may, needs to make use of a list of countries. You've already then got a table with a list of countries in there. You don't need to extract them from the people table, which wouldn't make sense. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set Alex to country one. I'm gonna go ahead and set Billy to country two. And I'm gonna set Dale to country three. Uh, sorry, not three, one. So how would we know what country to set a user to on the front end of side of things anyway? Well, let's just say you had a drop down list and you had a list of countries. Um, you would know from your country's table that you would have ID of one and two. So you could set this value based on that. You can have this within a drop down list as part of a form when a user registers or you enter the user's details or whatever. So we now know that we have a people's table with a country field with a an, a number relating to a country within the country's table. Now let's go ahead into our code and actually output this list of um, people. So let's go ahead and create uh, an SQL statement. And this can just be select star from people 
and we will create a results array, a results uh, variable, sorry, with db query SQL. And then here we'll say if results num rows while row equals results fetch object. So we're basically getting an object of data back. We'll just echo out, um, I don't know, row first name. And we'll just do that for now. And we'll say otherwise echo no results. Okay, so what's happening here is we're selecting all data from the people table, executing the query. If there are rows, we are then going ahead and outputting them in lists. So we've now got Alex, Billy and Dale, as we'd expect. Now what I'm going to do is in brackets, I'm going to enter their country. So I'm going to say row country. And this is obviously just going to output one, two or one, which is useless. We don't want to do this. Now, how would we go about grabbing this country? Well, there's a really bad way to do this and a good way to do this. The bad way to do this would be to create an additional query in here to select the name of the country from the database. So let's go ahead and look at how this might be. So in here, we might say country equals DB query select star from countries where ID equals and then in here we can go ahead and say row country and then we could say something like um, country equals country um, fetch and then in here we could say country name oh sorry fetch object we want to do and that would bring back Great Britain, United States and Great Britain. So we've basically achieved what we want to do by using two different tables. However, the problem here is that we're doing this within a while loop. So what's what's happening is we are um, looping here three times because we have three records. Now, this isn't too bad now. Uh, the, the, you can't notice the speed difference. But if there are a hundred, even a thousand records here, what this means is that we're then generating an extra thousand queries. In this case, we're generating an extra three queries. So we're performing one query here and then three queries here. That's four queries in total just to get back three people's details. So we don't want to do this. We never, ever, ever want to do this within a while loop. Instead, what we want to do is include everything in this first query, which means we only will then have one query. So we're back to now, um, let's say row country. So we're back to this sort of square one now where we've got one, two and one. Now, how on earth can we do this all within, within one query? Well, let's just bring this down a little bit just so it's easier to read. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this query and we're going to use a join. Now, there's a few different types of joins. We've got an inner join, which is the same as just a join. We've got a left join and we've got a right join. Now, we're going to be using a left join. And the reason we're using a left join is that if you think about the database tables, um, let's just say people being on the left and countries being on the right. People will always exist. We want to output these people always. We don't care whether they have a country or not. We're going to left join um, the countries table because we want to output the people regardless of whether they have a country or not. The country might be set to zero, in which case we still want to output the person, but it, they just don't have a country. Uh, if it's an inner join, it's going to require that there's a relationship both ways. So it will only output what has a relationship both ways. So if a person doesn't have a country, that person won't be output. So we'll be focusing on left join now. I won't confuse you too much with the different types of joins. But let's go ahead and take a sort of different approach to selecting this data. Instead of saying select star, which will just basically get all of the fields from the people table, I'm going to say select people dot first name, comma, countries dot name as country from people. 
Now, this might confuse you if you're not too used to this, this kind of syntax, but what I'm saying is select the first name field because this is the only one that we're outputting from people. We could do people.star, but we'll just leave it as people.first name. So select the first name from the people uh, table. Select the name, which is the name of the country, from the countries table as country. So we're calling this something different because we want to output it down here. If we were to not do this, we would have to do row name. And that's just confusing because what does name mean? Is it the person's name? So we're going to call this country. So we're saying as country from people. And we can even say from people countries. We don't need to do that. We'll do it anyway. OK, so let's put this down on next line just so it looks a bit more uh, easier to read. So now what's going to happen here is when I go ahead and refresh, we get this out. So it's saying here, Alex, Great Britain, Alex, United States, Billy, Great Britain, Billy, United States, Dale, Great Britain, Dale, United States. What on earth is going on here? Well, what's happened is, is we've selected everything. We've not defined any sort of join. So regardless of whether this data is there or not, we're getting back because there's an, because there is two countries in the countries table. This record is being output twice with both, both potential instances. If we were to create another um, country within here, we would get three of these output. What we need to do is link these up somehow so we actually return only the amount of records we need with the right um, with the right country. So we use left join for this. Now this is uh, slightly tricky, but it's um, easier than you sort of immediately appears. So we're going to left join countries, which is the reason we don't necessarily need to say from people countries. We could get rid of that if we wanted to. We'll leave it in anyway. So left join country. So we're left joining this country's table on, and this means on a particular condition. So we're going to say on where people.country equals countries.id. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we're doing this on, uh, let's just duplicate this. So here's the people's table, here's the country's table. We're saying on country dot, uh, oh, sorry, people dot country. So whether that be one or two equals countries dot ID, be that one or two. All we're really saying here is where this matches this. And then we know which country that user then belongs to. So what's going to happen now is when we've done this, we're going to get country's name as country, but it's on this particular condition and that will join the data together. So when we refresh, ah, oh, we get no results. Brilliant. So let's have a look. Um, might need to get rid of this actually. Yes, there we go. Sorry, we, we, we get rid of this because we're basically left join. We're doing a left join on countries table, so we don't need to say from people countries. So um, now what's happened is, is it's joined up them IDs. It's matched them IDs up. So we have Alex, Great Britain, Billy, United States and Dale, Great Britain. So now what happens is the point of this is that if, say, for example, Dale changed to another country that reflected, and in the countries table, if uh, Great Britain needed to be changed, I don't know, with an exclamation mark on the end, that then will update this um, for all users. So again, if we were to do United States with an exclamation mark, this will then update it for both users. So it's a lot more maintainable way of working with data. So that's basically how we join very simply two um, tables together with the data that we require um, in this case, it's a country. We've only exec executed one query and we've actually pulled data from two tables and uh, made a really reusable solution from this.